the investigation into the murder of model Jasmine Fiore is far from over. Police this morning are looking into whether her ex-husband, TV star Ryan Jenkins, acted alone. They're checking to see if he had help disposing of her body and if he had help escaping to Canada, where he apparently committed suicide. CBS News correspondent Michelle Gielen is here with the latest. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Maggie, there are many unanswered questions, and the more police uncover about this case, the more mysterious the murder of Jasmine Fiore becomes. Reality show contestant Ryan Jenkins was found hanging by a belt from a coat rack at the Thunderbird Motel in Hope, British Columbia on Sunday night. Hotel manager Kevin Walker was shocked when he found Jenkins' body. You're not expecting it to open up the door and see a man hanging right there. It was also a shock to Jenkins' father, who told the L.A. Times, quote, if my son was guilty, he was crazy. He was not the boy we knew. He added that his son appears to have been corrupted by the Hollywood lifestyle. Police had been searching for the former real estate developer since his ex-wife Jasmine Fiore's body was found on August 15th, strangled, mutilated, and stuffed into a suitcase in a dumpster outside Los Angeles. Canadian authorities say they have identified the woman who helped Jenkins check into the motel a few days ago, but they're not revealing her identity. Investigators believe Jenkins and the mystery woman knew each other. We have to determine if there was anyone else involved, if anyone helped with the crime. Meanwhile, Jasmine Fiore's white Mercedes is still missing. Police say it could play a crucial role in helping them close the case. Jenkins was set to appear in another VH1 reality show, I Love Money 3, but VH1 announced yesterday that it would be canceling that show. Aggie? All right, Michelle Gielen. Thank you, Michelle. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Donald Farmer, who was a contestant with Jenkins on another reality show that's been canceled, Megan Wants a Millionaire. And in Los Angeles, Stuart Brazel, the casting director who selected Jenkins to appear on reality TV. Good morning to you both. Morning. Hello. Let me begin with you, Donald. It, Jenkins' father has said that if he did this, it's because he was corrupted by Hollywood. Did you get any signs working with him on this reality show that he was somebody who was intoxicated by fame and came to crave the spotlight? Uh, no, I really didn't get that sense at all. He seemed just like a uh, very friendly, outgoing guy. Uh, he was. There were some people in the house that were a little arrogant, a little rude, but Ryan was always, you know, a complete gentleman. Ryan was, I thought, one of the nice guys. He wasn't one of these out spoken, trying to steal the attention type of people? There were other people on that show that would fall into that category, but I really wouldn't put Ryan there, no. <clears throat> he was more, he was always, you know, well-mannered. He was very smooth. He, uh, you know, he uh, knew how to work comfortably with other people, but no, there were people that were just like blatantly trying to steal mm -hmm. the spotlight and do every trick they could to do it, but I really wouldn't put Ryan in that group. Let me bring in Stuart. What was it about him that made you cast him, Stuart? Well, Ryan was just full of energy, louder than life, the, would get the most attention in the room. He was someone that really fit perfectly for this type of show, especially a dating reality show. He knew he was going to have fun and make for really good TV. In 2007, he had been convicted of assaulting a girlfriend. Did you know that? Do you look into the background of these contestants before you book them? My job as a casting, as the casting team for a show like this, I'm a freelance casting director, we have nothing to do with the background checks. Now, I assume because I've been on a reality show myself, and I know they did do a background check on me, mm -hmm. my assumption would be that there was a natural vetting process in order, but I'm not speaking as a representative for the show. Looking back, how, how did Ryan treat women on the show? Now, with the benefit of hindsight, were there any red flags that you can see? Uh, he went out of his way to be nice to me, I would say. I mean, Ryan was a competitive guy, and there were some people in the house you could see that he sized up as maybe his competition, and maybe he was a little more competitive with them. He was always very kind to me. I mean, there was one time in the house where we were all together together in the living room. Ryan was sitting in a chair. I was standing over him. Ryan accidentally bumped a table and made a glass on the table break, and it fell into a bunch of pieces. And I immediately got down on the floor and helped him clean up the mess. And he was sort of surprised by that because we were supposed to be all competitive, competing with each other and I was helping him out. Then later on that night when I was supposed to do one of my close-ups, Ryan ran up to me right before my close-up and told me I had a little piece of lint on my shirt and helped me look better for my close-up. So we were sort of like helping each other on the show and I thought he was a really friendly guy. All right, Donald Farmer, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. Stuart Brazel, thank you as well. Thank you. All right, you're welcome.